Hi, this is Guru from GuruWrites.com with part 8 of the c -sharp tutorial series Strings, Garbage Collection and Profiler String is an object of the system that string class where system is the namespace and string is the class. The lower case string is a C-sharp alias of the system dot string class. Unlike most of the .NET built-in data types which are structures, string is a class. A string stores a value of text internally as a read-only collection of car objects. The string hello world for instance is stored as one character each starting with character H ending with the exclamation. Starting String objects are immutable, they cannot be changed once they have been created. For instance, in the movie Batman, Bruce Wayne is an ordinary human being during the day. But at night, when he wears this suit in the background, he immensely discovers that he is mutable. That is, he changes his form from Bruce Wayne to Batman. Bruce Wayne is said to be mutable when he turns into Batman because he changes his form from one to another. In the same movie, we have the Joker. The Joker is a normal human being during the day and he behaves as normal during the night. The point here is that Joker is immutable, just like the C-sharp string class. He does not change once he's been declared. For our demo, let's create a new console application and give it a name, the string. In the class you receive within the main method, write down lowercase string, which is a C sharp alias type of type string class. This lowercase string is a C sharp type. So we declare a variable by the same name and initialize it to hello world. We also use the .NET type string class and declare it by the variable name .NET type equals to the same value. We are following this practice to understand that the lowercase string is equivalent to the uppercase string class. So we use console.writeline to output these two variables to the end user's console and see that the outcome is the same. So if we now start without debugging by hitting Ctrl F5, we will see that the outcome in either case is the same. Now in order to prove that strings are immutable, we define a variable of type string by the name output value and initialize its value to have a nice. To prove that strings are immutable, we will try to change output values value using an assignment operator to have a nice day. So in this process of concatenation, since we are trying to change and create a mutant string object, this should throw an error since strings are immutable. Let's see what the outcome is. So to see the outcome, we will start without debugging by hitting Ctrl F5. And the outcome is this. We were expecting an error, but the string was able to change its form and it was behaving like mutable. This was only possible because of the garbage collector. The garbage collector deleted your old string object and replaced it with a new one. Let's understand what garbage collection is all about. Memory to the .NET objects is allocated dynamically at runtime by the common language runtime. As a developer, you do not have to allocate memory explicitly. The common language runtime periodically checks the memory heap 
and looks for unreferenced objects. And if it finds any, then it releases its resources and frees up the memory. This process is called garbage collection. In order to better understand garbage collection, let's understand the lifetime of an object. An object is when first declared like this, no memory is assigned to it in the common language runtime. The object when instantiated with the keyword new in .NET allocates memory and when you reference it with a null reference, it is dereferenced by the common language runtime. And this is the time when no variables are referencing an object that it is eligible for garbage collection which is managed by the common language runtime. So let's take a look at what happens if garbage collection releases your string object and assigns it each time. That can be using up a lot of memory resource. So to see this, we will declare an object of type string by the name garbage collection test and assign it a value hello world. This is not a major operation. But to see a major operation in here, for this process, we will loop through a collection of 10,000 items in a for loop. If you are not aware of what for loops are, they are used to iterate a process. We'll talk more about them in the later on series. So each time you loop from 1 to 10,000, we change the value of garbage collection test variable and append hello world to it. In this process, 10,000 times garbage collection will be working to destroy and create your object which is a heavy resource intensive operation. Hit Ctrl F5 to see the result. Now this result was pretty extensive on the common language runtime as far as the memory is concerned. To know more about this, let's right click on the project name and choose Build. This way we build an executable. We right click on the project name and choose Open Folder in the File Explorer. Go to the bin, Debug and this is the executable. Let's double click and if, see the, if the result is same or not. It is the same. Now, to see the outcome and the energy that it has consumed, I have downloaded the .NET Common Language Runtime Profiler from the internet. You can Google it and download it as well. When you try to explore it, you will find these locations in which you will go to the 32-bit and launch it. Once you launch this, you will check both the checkboxes to track its performance and start the application which is in our case on the desktop. We go to the folder the string our current project folder and then try to traverse to bin debug and pick up our application. Once our application is loaded into the common language runtime profiler we will be able to see how it behaves and how much memory it consumes. As you can see the allocated bytes in the heap statistics is 1400571269. That is a huge amount of bytes that has been allocated to the system. And if you look at the histogram, when I scroll right, you can see all this memory that has been consumed alone by the red legend, which is system.string. As you can see here, it is 99 point a lot of percentage consumed. And you, even if you look at the timeline of the garbage collector, this is the amount of resource that it has consumed, as you can see. This will take a while to load. Please have patience. So if you can focus on the red legend, this red legend is all the objects referenced and dereferenced time and again by the garbage collector, which will be shown in a short while to the right hand side within the legend. So if you can focus to the right hand side, you can see the red one is system.string object. And you can imagine how much load goes into this. So if I close this, you can even focus on the garbage collection statistics. Now, we will come back to something which is more interesting in the way you should actually change the string types there is a string builder class offered to you by Microsoft. The system.text.stringbuilder class can be used when you want to modify a string without creating a new object. Using the string builder class 
can boost performance when concatenating many strings together in a loop. We will try this example now with this syntax. String builder class sb object is equal to new string builder instantiating with the value initialized to hello world. Let's come back to Visual Studio and the same thing that we have done before we will do it now in a smart way using the string builder class. The namespace for this system.txt is already added at the top so all you need to do is straight away write down string builder. and instantiate it, initializing it to the value hello world. For our example, we will loop through once again 10,000 items and try to change the value of the string builder object sb 10,000 times. So sb.append. The append method is used to modify the string. We will use this method and pass a parameter of type hello world value. To display this outcome to the end user's console, we'll use console.writeline and hit control F5 to see the outcome and the result you will see will be the same. But you'll be surprised to see the performance levels will be too less. So if you build the application and if you try to use the common language runtime profiler to load once again the same application you will see the performance has been amazingly outstanding with only a few bytes consumed and the garbage collector will be negligibly called so can you see the allocated bytes are so less and if I click on histogram you can see the chart that displays how much energy has been consumed how much resource has been consumed by the yellow legend which is system.string almost 32% which is pretty less than the previous execution. So it is always recommended you see that you define things as far as the string is concerned whenever the string is to be modified change it only using the string builder class. I hope this example makes sense to you Come, let's uh, proceed with the other topic on strings, which is vertebrim. Vertebrim string literals are nothing but at the rate characters. These are used to display what exactly is available in the double quotes. Because we have a lot of escape sequences, for example, backslash is an escape sequence, and if you want to outcome that, it doesn't output properly until you use a vertebrim string literal like at the rate. The same is the case in the second example where string text is equal to Norway is called the land of the midnight sun which is in three separate lines without the at the rate symbol it would throw an error. Come let's take a simple demo of this. In Visual Studio we will go to the same project and we will comment the earlier execution of the program by using control E followed with control C for comment. I'll just copy the same piece of code that I have in the PowerPoint and we will try to display this to the end user's console using console.writeline and see what the outcome is. So control F5 start without debugging and you will see the outcome is as it is literally within the double quotes because of the at the rate symbol. And if I remove the at the rate symbol, you will receive an error message because the backslash is now acting as a backslash for escape sequences. So we receive an error and in fact we receive a lot of errors. The other way around this problem is that you can use the escape sequence backslash twice to escape the backslash. So it will be treated as only one backslash. Now if you try to hit F5, or control F5 you will see the outcome is as expected that you got with at the rate string vertebrim literal and if you put an at the rate now and try control F5 it will give you double slashes because at the rate displays whatever is available literally now sometimes this is not what you want 
Sometimes you wouldn't prefer to use Vertebim literals, especially in the case of escape sequences. Here we are using backslash T to insert a tab space. So if you really want to insert a tab space and that is what you intend, this will not work because you have at the rate Vertebim literal in the front, it will display backslash T literally as it means. In such cases, you would avoid at the rate to make sure that the escape sequence works fine for you. Now since we have removed it and if I hit Ctrl F5 now, it works as expected. So I hope you got an idea of how strings work within the C Sharp language. Thanks for your valuable time. If you feel you have learned something new today, please click on the like button below. If you have any queries or suggestions, kindly post them down in the comment section below.